As I'm sure most of you are aware by now, WWE Hall of Famer Superfly Jimmy Snuka passed away yesterday at the age of 73, succumbing to a variety of ailments, most notably stomach cancer. And Jimmy Snuka has always been a mixed bag type of topic for me. Because I can think back to the 80s when I was a kid, and I remember the Superfly as the Superfly. I remember him being one of my favorite wrestlers as a kid. I remember one of the first wrestling action figures that I had was one of those old hard rubber ones of Superfly Jimmy Snuka. I had him. I had Hulk Hogan. I had the Macho Man Randy Savage. I think I had Andre the Giant as well and a few others. The Junkyard Dog, obviously. Um, so, you know, I grew up a fan of Superfly Jimmy Snuka. And this is a guy who had a very nice wrestling career, had a nice run in the 70s as a heel going up into the early 80s in terms of the old WWF that morphed into the WWF. He had memorable matches with Mr. Bob Backlund in the steel cage, you know, jumping off the top of the cage, and then obviously the great match in 83 between him and the magnificent Don Morocco. You've heard Mick Foley talk about and many others have talked about and just how big of a deal it was for Snooker to jump off of the top of the cage in Madison Square Garden. You know, it's one of those memories that are in, in indelibly etched in time in the history of the WWE and, frankly, professional wrestling as well. You know, I think of a guy like Snooker, and I remember, you know, 1991, WrestleMania Seven, the first victim of the Undertaker streak. It was Superfly Jimmy Snooker. You know, that was a significant early victory in the push of The Undertaker, having him beat somebody that was a very established name throughout the business over the previous 15, 20 years. And, you know, I sit there and I remember that Superfly Jimmy Snuka. And, unfortunately, later on in his career, I also remember the guy that really didn't know when to say when, that hung around far too long, that when you saw him, it was kind of like, oh, he's still alive, and oh, good God, he looks like that. And you remember those moments, the 2008 Royal Rumble, WrestleMania 25, you know, those type of deals. And I yeah, remember that too. But there's also other baggage that goes along with the Superfly, you know, dating back to 1983 and what happened in a hotel room uh, with his girlfriend at the time, Nancy Argentino, and, you know, her unfortunate death and the cloud of suspicion that hung over the Superfly for many years as to whether or not it was at his hands or whether or not it was an accident. And, you know, it's tough in these type of situations because in theory, in our culture, society, this country, you're supposed to be innocent until proven guilty. Which is there for a reason and I understand it. But sometimes just because somebody ultimately wasn't found guilty, everybody believes him to be guilty. See O.J. Simpson. So I didn't really know how I was going to react ultimately when I would find out that the Superfly had indeed passed. And I knew this was coming for a period of time, and I think all of you did too. Um, you know, even when you got the announcement that he was going to be uh, investigated again and there were going to be charges potentially brought against him for what happened to Nancy back in 1983, and we started hearing about him having dementia and him having stomach cancer and not being in great shape, you figured it probably wasn't going to be long. And that's just the way it is. I didn't really know how I was going to react. Because on the one hand, there's all these feelings of a wrestling fan from back when I was a kid. And like I said, I grew up on the Superfly and other individuals. You know, he was a part of WrestleMania 1. And he was one of the first action figures I had. I remember him from the WWF cartoon and, you know, so many other things. But then I think about the other baggage. And it's like, you know, that's not the entire story of the man. But it is a part of the man. It is a major significant part of the man. And, you know, when you talk about in Superfly's book, he wrote about how the incident had ruined his life. Well, you know, at the end of the day, it ruined her life because she's dead. And I see on social media all the people in the wrestling business sending out their thoughts and prayers to the family and condolences and everything like that. And I sit there and... You know, I look and I say, I understand it. You know, a lot of people probably had close connections to him and the family over the years. Uh, many people worked with him over the years. So I get that and I understand it. And I understand looking at it from that perspective. 
But from my perspective on the outside looking in, you know, should we say to about Superfly Jimmy Snuka that he should rest in peace? No, I don't think so. I think if anything, we should say he should rot in hell. Because at the end of the day, we all know the evidence is overwhelming. And just because he was never ultimately convicted or ultimately faced trial on it doesn't mean he was innocent. It just means he was lucky and was fortunate for a variety of reasons. And you wonder what other factors were at play <coughs> Vince McMahon. But, you know, for all intents and purposes, we pretty much all know that he killed a young woman over 30 years ago. Now, I know some of you are going to sit there and say you shouldn't speak ill of the dead. Well, no. Because if it is who they were in their life, you're not slandering them. You're not saying anything that is untrue about them. It's like if all of a sudden if I die tomorrow, I don't want people to sit there and lie and talk about how great it was this and that. You, know, you can talk about my good things, you talk about my bad things, because at the end of the day, that's who I was. Talk about the smart decisions I made, the dumb decisions, the mistakes, the bad choices. They're all part of who I ultimately was. So I would hope all of those bad things wouldn't get swept under the rug or cast aside just because I was about to go six feet under or have my ashes in the nerve. It's just disingenuous. And if anything, I would hope that those things would be told in part along with the other parts so that way people can learn from them and grow from them. So I think that's ridiculous because we look at bad people throughout history, we talk about their flaws long after they're dead and buried. So why not? Especially if it is a part of who they were. And when we talk about Snuka, you know, even when we talk about the charges uh, being revisited a year ago and ultimately the charges not coming to fruition and not going to trial, it wasn't because there wasn't evidence or good evidence or overwhelming evidence to support that Snuka in some way, shape, or form did something very, very bad in that hotel room that night that probably led to the death of Nancy Argentino. It's the fact that he was deemed unfit to stand trial due to physical and mental ailments. And from a court standpoint, you know, you're looking at it and saying, eh, it's already June 2016. You know, prognosis aren't that good in terms of how much longer he has. Is it really worth putting him through a trial when he's not going to be aware of what's going on? And he might not even live through the trial. That's really what happened here. Why it took three plus decades for the investigation to reopen to begin with is beyond me. Somebody worked very, 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 very hard to keep this under wraps all of these years. And that's just the way it is. And again, just because he wasn't convicted in a court of law doesn't in one sense mean that he's not guilty as hell and needs to meet his maker and answer for what he did. And what I don't understand is so many wrestling fans are paying tribute and giving these nice, thoughtful tweets and everything, to which I sit there and say, why are you doing that? Why does he deserve that? If anything, to me, he deserves to be blackballed. He deserves the Chris Benoit treatment. Because when you think about what happened with Chris Benoit, and when you think about what happened in terms of Superfly Jimmy Snuka, there really aren't that many fundamental differences. You can sit there and say, well, Benoit killed both his wife and his child, and then ultimately himself. Yes, that is what he is alleged to do. If we want to use the argument that he was never convicted, tried in a court of law, uh, and faced justice that way, then it is all allegations and pointing to evidence, and potentially overwhelming evidence, that it is indeed what happened. So if Chris Benoit, for what happened and what he was alleged to do, has been blackballed from professional wrestling, has been blackballed by the WWE, you know, permanently blocked from the Hall of Fame or ever being mentioned on TV again, why doesn't Jimmy Snuka get the same treatment? There is overwhelming evidence, autopsy reports, you know, conflicting testimonies and statements by Snuka over the years in terms of what actually happened. I don't even think he remembers what happened. He was probably so pilled up and coked up and roided up he doesn't even know. But at the end of the day, something terrible did happen. And a young woman lost her life. And the evidence overwhelmingly points to it being at the hands of the Superfly. So if Benoit killed people, his family, 
and he gets the black ball treatment, and we try to erase him from the history books. The why isn't the Superfly going to get that same treatment? Why wouldn't he deserve that same treatment? In my opinion, he most certainly does. He ultimately killed somebody. And if you want to sit there and use this dumb defensive kind of Markish bullshit about he didn't do it, come on. Get with the fucking program. What did he do that was less significant than what Chris Benoit did? Ultimately, they both took life. No matter how you want to package that up, you want to talk about killing a wife and a kid, all right, yeah, it was terrible, and, and that's what happened. He needs to be blackballed forever. I agree. Completely. But if Snooker killed somebody, he deserves to be blackballed too. And if we never actually got charges, a trial, and a conviction to blackball Chris Benoit, why can't we get the same with Superfly Jimmy Snuka? He should be pulled from the WWE's Hall of Fame. He should not be mentioned on television anymore. There should not be any merchandise sold with his likeness or him his image on there. And I don't care if you like it or not. What's fair is fair. We all know deep down that he did something terrible. And he deserves... <laughs> To, his legacy deserves to pay the price. And hopefully, whatever maker he's meeting, he's being made to answer for what happened that night back in 1983. You know, I understand it's an incredibly complex thing, and there are many different layers and many different emotions evolve, involved. I'm not, I'm not ignoring that, and I'm not, it's not like I'm not sensitive to that. I understand it. But understand here, when we look at the bigger picture, what is that fundamentally different between Chris Benoit and Jimmy Snuka in terms of what they did? Even if he didn't kill his son Daniel, Benoit still killed his wife. He still killed somebody. Bad enough, it deserves blackball treatment. Snuka killed his girlfriend, I think, while he was married at the time, of course. Um, why doesn't he deserve the same? I've never understood how Snook has kind of been able to fly under the radar all of these years. I've never understood how Snooka has been able to be brought back to WWE for different appearances, knowing that there's this big matzo ball hanging over everything. You know, at the end of the day, it's probably because Vince doesn't care, because Vince had something to do with 1983 and this shit kind of getting swept under the rug. I mean, if you think about it, Snooka was one of his top guys back then. Would it really have been good for all this crap to go to trial and have a conviction and have your name, the WWF, the owner Vince McMahon's name, splashed all over the papers all across the country with Superfly Jimmy Snuka, a convicted murderer or convicted of manslaughter? You didn't need that at that time, especially when you're getting ready to go into a national and international expansion. So... Hopefully this company doesn't sit there and try to make some big tribute to this guy. Hopefully they don't try and sit there and give him some fucking 10 bell salute. Because at the end of the day, he doesn't deserve it. It breaks my heart to say it. Because like I said, I grew up a huge fan of Superfly back in the day. I thought he was a badass. I thought he was legit. And, you know, one of the real early pioneers of the high fly style of professional wrestling. But when he flew, it meant something. But for me, all that got swept away over the years. And... You know, now, I'd just rather we forget about him. I'd rather you guys forget about him, too. I'd rather we not talk about him anymore. I'd rather us not praise him anymore. Because at the end of the day, we all know what he did, and we know he doesn't deserve it. Rest in peace, my ass. For what he did, I hope he rots in hell.